everybody, back straight away for the second video. I was faced with the choice of either doing some invoicing or doing another VC, so I thought I'd do another VC. Now, a recent, um, a recent video by Mike, Bostonian Reggie, uh, had a VCLT from uh, John Coltrane 68, and out of, when he was uh, pulling open the uh, package, he pulled out a, a, a brochure for the new music distribution service in the States. And in the um, mid to late 70s, I worked in a bookshop in Brighton, which is on the south coast of England. And there we used to run a, um, a music distribution service ourselves. And we used to sell stuff, only retail, not uh, wholesale stuff. And we used to get a lot of stuff from NMDS. Uh, initially through Evan Parker, Incus Records, who was their kind of UK agent, and then directly from the States as well. And after I left, I kind of um, and, and, and closed down this, the uh, mail order service. I also carried on getting stuff from NMDS. So I thought I'd pull out a few records. The, the irony was, of course, we were working in the bookshop. We were handling all this great music. But we were earning so little money, we couldn't afford to buy any records. So um, we ended up kind of... Uh, I, ended up, I did get a few, but, but not as many as I would like to have done at the time. Um, I should explain, by the way, why I'm not sitting in front of in my music room. There's two reasons for that. All my records are in a very small room in my flat, and it's standing room only in there at the moment. I might do a, I might do a tour at some point or other. And the other thing is I'm having some work done in my place at the moment, and the place is full of dust, so I'm in my kitchen. So it's a dark, steamy night in London town. So I'm going to talk about a few things that I picked up through um, New Music Distribution Service, which was run by... Carla, well, it was set up by Carla Blay and others, and Carla Blay, of course, was involved with the um, Jazz Composers Orchestra Association and put out her, her own stuff on that label on what, which is now most available from um, ECM. I'll do something about the actual label at some other point. But in the meantime, these are a few of the records that I got when uh, we were distributing and were stuff from um, the States and the UK. Uh, the first is a record by Milford Graves, which is Babby, and this is a ferocious free jazz record featuring Milford on percussion with Arthur Doyle and Hugh Glover, both on saxophones. It really is a kind of it's one you almost need to wear your crash helmet for, actually, when you're listening to this. It's a really intense, actually beautiful record, but, but certainly not for the faint-hearted, this one. Uh, this came out on a label called the Institute of Percussion Studies, and... Um, I really love this. I mean, I love Milford Grace playing. I always have done, actually. And um, this was the one that really got me going on him after hearing him with Alba Ayla and other people. Um, quite hard to find this record now. Um, uh, I think it was reissued. And, of course, Arthur Doyle, who plays in this record, has a number of his own stuff records out as well. I've got a track dedicated to him by Sonic Youth, of course, as well. So this is Milford Grace's Babby. Or Babby Music, I think it's actually the proper title. Um, a great record. I mean, if you like your um, if you like your free jazz, fairly out there and pretty intense. This is the one for it. Um, second up, also on the Institute of Percussion Studies label, is a duo record between Andrew Cyril, the great drummer, and Milford Graves, called Dialogue of the Drums. And um, this was this was this came out around I think came out at the same time as the as Babby music and so forth as well. I've always really loved, I mean, it's great to hear, they've got very, very contrasting styles, um, and it's great to hear them playing together. Andrew Sills is a fantastic drummer, I think he's that right up there with one of my favourites, I think. Of course, he worked with Cecil Taylor and uh, had his own great band called Mayono, I think it's pronounced as well, and is still around now doing good stuff as well. So that's Andrew Sorrell and Milford Graves on Institute of Percussion Studies. Really, really nice record. If you can go see the cut right here. Um, next up, um, this is a kind of quite difficult, well, very difficult to find record, actually. This was uh, a very small pressing um, with Don Pullen and Milford Grace at, recorded live at the Yale University. Uh, here, I only had an edition of maybe 100, 100 records. Some of them have a hand-painted sleeve by Milford Grace, which, is, um, um, which obviously is even more collectible. Um, I mean, Don Pullen's fantastic pianist. I think he was always kind of slightly overshadowed by Cecil Taylor, actually. People perhaps didn't give him the kind of the credit they should have done. Very, I mean, sounds nothing like Cecil at all, actually. Much more, much more kind of, um, kind of heavier kind of trunk to his playing, I think, as well. This is a really nice record. Um, very, very difficult to find. It was going for mad money at one point. It was, I saw it go somewhere for over a thousand pounds, I think, or maybe a thousand dollars. 
but um, it's calmed down a bit now, and there's still, there are copies around as well. But it was a, it's kind of in a very heavy cardboard sleeve, kind of almost like a laminated cardboard sleeve. Um, and as I say, some of the copies of this record had um, hand-painted sleeves by, um, by Milford as well. Really good stuff. Uh, it really interesting interplay between the two musicians. Kind of not all kind of full on kind of um, free jazz. Some of it's kind of more, much more thoughtful and kind of, um, uh, but really great. There was also a second volume of this, which is slightly easier to find, which was called Nomo, which I think came. Uh, no, the label was called SRP, and I think they only put these two records out. Um, this was the, the the second half of the concert. And, and there are a few more copies of this around than there are for the first one. Again, a really nice picture of Milford on the front, actually. Who took the photograph? It looked like a Valerie Wilmer photograph, but it's not, actually. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, a continuation of the first one, really. Um, really, really, really great record. This was, this was in Thurston Moore's famous kind of 10 records, 10 favorite free jazz records or something like that as well, I think, in one point. <clears throat> Next up, I know, I think this might have been shown already actually, but I'll, I'll show it again. This was on Rashid Ali's label um, called Survival Records. And this is a duo record with Rashid Ali and the violinist, great violinist Leroy Jenkins, called Swifter the Wings, the, the Winds of Life, beg your pardon, Survival Records. Really nice, really great record. There's, a, there's another one with um, Frank Lowe and Rashid Ali, which I think Anders has shown. I think, in one of his one of his earlier videos as well. Um, I really he's got sleeve notes by Stanley Crouch, who um, later on in his uh, life did, was not a great fan of, of free jazz and improvised music and so forth. Really great record. I mean, kind of um, much more, much fuller sounding respect from just violin and uh, percussion and Rashid Daly. Well, everyone knows Rashid from his playing with um, with John Coltrane and so forth. So it's Rashid Daly, Swift, Swift of the Wings of Life which is on Survival Records. <clears throat> Next up, and this is a real beauty, actually, and I just checked this out online, actually, just before I did the post, and Bobby Norton still has copies of this record to sell from the site. Anyway, this is a vibraphone player, Bobby Norton, who had a record out on the um, ECM subsidiary, Japo Records, with Leo Smith on trumpet, and um, Perry Robinson, the great clarinet player, who played with all kinds of different people um, around that time. Really underrated record. This is a beautiful record. A beautiful record. It's called The Haunt and it's on Otic Records. It's very, very kind of quiet and reflective. Um, everyone knows what a great trumpeter Leo Smith is, or Wadada Leo Smith, as we should call him now. Um, this is almost like a kind of, almost like a, sounds almost like an ECM record actually. Um, very peaceful, reflective, um, beautiful. Very highly recommended. And as I say, Bobby seems to have some cops, sealed vinyl copies. I think it might be the real issue, or this might be the real issue, I'm not sure which one, on his, um, on his website for, I think, about 18 bucks or something. So I can't recommend this record more highly. <coughs> Next up, I've mentioned Frank Lowe earlier on, and this is a, a, a record called Doctor Too Much, which came out on a label called Karma Records. And this is, um, this is Frank with um, Leo Smith, uh, Philip Wilson, the great Philip Wilson, lovely strong, and Fred Williams on bass. Um, a kind of, almost like a, kind of veers between kind of free jazz and almost like a kind of free bop style on, on a couple of songs as well. Really nice record. Um, they do a version of Lester Barry's Crush on here as well. Um, good stuff. Quite hard to find this, I think. I haven't seen many copies of it. The, the label also put a, a record out by Sonny Murray called Child. Charred Earth on this label as well. So this is Dr. Too, Frank Lowe's Dr. Too Much on Karma Records. Another one I got from the music description service. Next one up, I think I've shown this actually on, on Dr. Rhythm, but I couldn't, I, couldn't, um, I couldn't quite remember. This was M2 May's Rebirth Cycle, which features, um, on one track, features the kind of Miles band at the time, actually, with Pete Cozy and Al Foster and uh, Reggie Lucas and people. This is, this is a kind of um, great spiritual jazz record and it fits the bill of purpose and there's a very long track called Sace which is written by M. Tume which has a fantastic guitar solo by Richard Lucas on it which is, we don't think of him as being a kind of um, 
a lead player really, because his role with Miles is much more kind of rhythm role. So. Features um, kind of Jimmy Heath, Gene Kahn, um, Azal Lawrence, John Stubblefield, Stanley Cowell, Reggie Lucas, Buster Williams, Leroy Jenkins again, uh, Billy Hart, all kinds of people in here. And there's one track with um, with uh, almost the Miles band with Biette on electric piano. I'll talk about Biette at some point in the future as well. So it's in two mates rebirth cycle. <coughs> Next up is a label called Philly Jazz, which um, I'm not too difficult to find actually. I mean, the stuff's around. Uh, just going to take a slug of coffee. Cheers, Derek, actually, another fellow coffee, coffee drinker. Um, and one of my favourite Sun Ra records, actually, um, on, on, on Philly Jazz, which is Of Mythic Worlds. I don't know what, what it's, I think, the, I, I think I cut the corner off. I don't think it's actually a cutout, actually. Um, uh, Sun Ra record, like, kind of mid to late 70s, I think, yeah, 1978. has a fantastic version of um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow on it as well. And a great segue from that into... Um, into Inside the Blues as well, and a great version of May and Tempest on it. So this is Sunrise of Mythic Worlds. It has a kind of a little letter inside from Philly Jazz talking about, the, um, talking about the new release and the next release, which I'm going to show you right now. Um, good stuff. I mean, if you like Sunra, I mean, Roger's fantastic post on all of the um, satin issues. This is another one that's really worth getting from um, Features all the usual suspects, John Gilmore, um, and Co. Good stuff. <coughs> also on Philly Jazz, and in fact, there was a release they're talking about in the, in the letter in the last one, was a Sonny Murray record, Sonny Murray's Untouchable Factor, uh, called Apple Course. Now, this is quite a quite surprising record when it came out. Beautiful cover, actually. I love the photograph on the cover, which I presume is of um, maybe it's of Philly, maybe it's of New York, I'm not sure, actually. Very moody cover. Um, this was actually a kind of almost like a kind of part of it's kind of almost like a relatively straight ahead record from from Sonny and uh, features Frank Foster, who's obviously not known so much as a as a, or, a as a, a kind of all out free player on here. Also, Oliver Lake's on here, the great Oliver Lake, Yusuf Yancey, who um, is a name who pops up not on not, not on too many records actually. He also plays a theremin in here and the electronic instrument as well as. Um, uh, trumpet and flute and Don Pullen's on it. The great, I think she's Belgian, excuse me if I'm wrong here, guitarist Monette Sudla, who um, died very young, had a really nice guitarist as well. Cecil McBee, Hamlet Blewett, Arthur Blythe, Fred Hopkins, um, and Co. Lots. And so this is Sonny Murray's Untouchable Factor. It's Apple Course from Philly Jazz. Um, next up, um, one of the labels that um, I think I got from the Music Distribution Service, if not, it was certainly around the same time, uh, was Sackville Records, which was associated with um, Coda Magazine in Canada, Bill Smith's Coda Magazine in Canada. And um, they put out some great stuff. A lot of it's been reissued on CD. I think, I don't, I'm not sure whether it's come out on vinyl again. But one of my all time kind of favourite musicians is Roscoe Mitchell. And this, uh, obviously, of the art and sound of Chicago and other, other sources, this was his um, solo saxophone record from his concert. Love the cover of this as well. I love the, um, love the collection of saxophones and the dog. Pretty cool as well. And this, had, this was, this was uh, mostly short tracks, featured a version of Tutankhamen, the, um, the, um, the art ensemble uh, tune and so forth. So it also has a early version of the song Nona, or Nuna, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, or Nona. It's recorded in 1973. Now, uh, there's a fantastic version of this on record on Nessa, the Nessa label. And um, there's one second, hang on, technical glitches here. What's going on? There we are. Um, and I'll talk about Nessa, I think, as a separate post at some point or other. God knows when I'm going to do all these posts I'm talking about. Um, this is a really nice record, Roscoe Mitchell, so Sassan Concerts. Um, talked about Don Pullen earlier on. This is a this is a solo record that came out on, on Sackville. Can you glare again? Um, Don Pullen solo piano record, solo piano album, is what it sounds like actually. Again, very under very underrated Don, I think. As a musician, excuse me, I was jumping about. On Sackville Records. Don Pullen. 
solo record. He, he did a number of records on Black Saint as well, which are all worth listening to. Great pianist, really underrated. He also played um, a lot in the last, later part of his career with um, one of my favourite artists, Kip Hanrahan, who was um, who's a kind of almost like a kind of film producer rather than a, than a, a, um, a, a musician or a record producer. Don Pullen's so this is what happened. And last up is a, a duo record with Joseph Bowie, or Bowie, who's uh, Lester's brother and and Oliver Lake, which was um, also in Sackville. Very nice kind of thing. Um, Joseph is a trombone player, also went to form the band Defunct, which was like a, almost like a free funk kind of band later on in the eighties and so forth. And this was recorded in mid seventies and so, and has some sleep notes from Coda magazine. So a lot of other labels. I mean, I'll talk about actually. Why not? I'll talk about them now. Actually, how long is it? Eighteen minutes. No way. Next time round. Sorry about this. Um, so I'll, next time round, I'll talk about um, um, maybe the JCO label. But I also want to move away a bit from jazz and improvised music, and I think I'm going to do a post in the next week or so about contemporary classical music. How I got into that, some of the key records. That's in very much in response to Blake's, um, some stuff that Blake's been talking about on his post recently. And also, I think I might do something on P Funk, some kind of lesser known kind of George Clinton involved stuff as well. So, anyway, lots of love to everybody. I'm going to go and do those invoices now, and good night.